for all my beautiful black queens that are so infatuated with um dating white man what do you think sis i hear you all right hooray because the other side ain't much better but <clears throat> one thing you have to understand when you deal with white men the minute you do one wrong thing one wrong thing wrong just one you're done so to make a long story short this is basically all due to a fucking argument i woke up i was in a bad mood um me and my ex fiance was just arguing back and forth he ended up hit like hitting me slammed me on the ground and after he did that he called his daddy his daddy came and then i started arguing with his daddy like what the fuck you here for and um after that he was arguing with me called me uh, 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 you already know and pretty much left and took my baby bam slam that's pretty much done so here's that but now they're stating right but this is not on the police report but now you're stating that you took my kid because i hit him which it never happened um you know it didn't you're taking my kid because you want to take my kid you want to take everything for me for me and you feel like i don't deserve anything because i'm black and i have sex with your son and then we go to court and mind you this whole argument happened because dad keeps sexually harassing me. So we go to court and in court, he mentions nothing about his father. His father was never there at the incident. His father, nothing, protects them. This is what, this is what white people do. Your father tried to sexually assault me and you still protect him. Take his side, fuck me. And you know, at the end of the day, I haven't seen my kid after that. And then you're mad over TikToks. You take my child, make me homeless, take my finances, and you're mad over TikTok. White people were always going to be the victim. And I'm not deleting none of them. This is the truth. Deal with it. That's all I got left. When you move into your new apartment in June, just to get evicted in July. Hey, everybody. Please be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. So... Y'all, this story came across my feed and let me tell you, I was so disturbed. And you know what's so sad about this whole story? It's actually not uncommon. I mean, think about it. I've talked about it before. This whole swirl and divestor movement that is alive and well on TikTok and social media, these different channels. The issue I have with it, it, it isn't the idea of interracial dating, but it is the way that it objectifies black women and the white or the non-black men they're with. It's like they're promoting this like white savior complex. Like these men are like saviors or they're like God to them or they're here to save them from Blackistan and give them a, a better life. Like it's weird. And you know, you, you, you look at the way some these, these relationships are portrayed sometimes and they, and they look so fantastical and they look so beautiful. And it's, to me, what really gets me is when you're leading with that person's race. It's one thing, like I said, if you fall in love with somebody and they're a human and you're a human and you guys are excited about finding another human that you love and connect with. But that's different than, oh, my white, say my white boyfriend, white my man, look at his white skin. Like y'all, What's disturbing is because you got this whole narrative going out here that's telling women that white is right and that marrying or, or non-black is okay. And they go and they choose guys that have all the red flags that they would not choose if he was in dark skin. And it encourages women to overlook red flags. It encourages women to maybe make excuses for behaviors that they would not put up with within the black community. And unfortunately, what that can do is if you pick a, a guy that has bad character, you can end up being hurt. And so you look at the scenario and oh, it's so disturbing. And granted, you know, we only know her side of the story. We don't know his side of the story. So all we can do is guess. I mean, all we can, all we know is what she has said, but whether or not you totally agree with her or don't agree with her, what is clear is that this is a sad scenario. This is a broken relationship. And this debunks any idea out there that talks about, oh, well, you're gonna have a better marriage rate or a better relationship outcome if you strictly date somebody outside of your race. That's just not true. Because at the end of the day, 
if you choose somebody outside of a community that is toxic, then they're going to be toxic. And this brings me to the bigger point. We should be encouraging women to choose guys based upon good character. We should also be encouraging women, what does it mean to actually be a woman of good character? What are the qualities necessary to be a good wife and a good mother? What does that look like? What does that mean? Because if the emphasis becomes being or becoming a better woman or being and becoming a healthy, whole, emotionally well woman, then we're going to be a lot more inclined to attract that. But if we're not encouraged as women to deal with our own toxicity or our own trauma, or even ask ourselves, well, why is it that we're attracted to certain kinds of men who end up abusing us? Like if we never have those conversations, we run the risk of leaving a community and still choosing the exact same character of man, just in a different package, just with different skin. And here's another issue with this whole swirl of propaganda that tells black women that white is right and pushes this like white savior complex. The issue is that it also doesn't teach them to be open and aware when a potential partner might actually be racist. <laughs> like just because a guy will sleep with you or may even date you doesn't necessarily mean that he doesn't have racist ideals doesn't mean that he doesn't have a family that might have some racist ideals and you know it's so crazy to me that i have heard countless stories of black women who have gotten into relationships you know bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and then been left with a child without money um some of them homeless some of them you know having to move back in with their parents whatever financially bankrupt figuring out that the family doesn't respect them finding out that they will call them all kinds of names or do all kinds of disparaging things when push comes to shove. And I'm thinking, there weren't red flags beforehand. There was no indication that a person may be this way, but that's the thing about it. We're not talking about this. We're not talking about the fact that there are people out there who don't necessarily see you as an equal. While the swirler and divest movement is, is promoting this white savior complex and just telling black women to just choose a white guy and encouraging them to put on their blinders, there are still people out there who are using, using that and taking advantage of women. Using the fact that you have some women who are literally infatuated, and she even used the word infatuated, infatuated with the idea of just dating a white guy, that they will overlook obvious red flags. They will overlook obvious signs that the person could be dangerous or even racist. And like I said, it gets even more sad when a baby is involved or when families are involved, when hearts get broken and when people get hurt. And that's the cold part about it. If you don't vet properly, that can happen. If you date somebody or marry, try to marry somebody outside of your race, but they still have character flaws and they still have big issues, you can still be hurt. So, you know, that's the, that's the bigger thing. And to me, this is the biggest lesson in this. Women gotta get real about what's going on out there. And you're gonna find dusty guys within the black community. And you're gonna find dusty guys in the white or non black community. You'll, you'll find dust wherever you go. But if we as women focus on how to actually be our healthier best selves, then we will start to attract that which is healthier and that which is the best for us. And we won't have to get so caught up in race or these dusties or these nakers or all the disparaging terms that we use to, to characterize our traumatizing situations. We'll finally start to attract guys who treat us the way that we deserve. But that first requires getting honest with ourselves and it also requires steering clear of this toxic propaganda. But what do you think? Do you agree or do you disagree? Let me know what you think. Leave your questions, comments, concerns in the comment section below. Also be sure to check out my How to Be a Wife series where we talk about self-accountability and how women can prepare themselves to be the best woman for the man they want. Talk soon. Bye.